Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you a really cool tool with which you can create C64 game screens and sprites and character sets and all that. And it even exports runnable PRG files or assembly source code, which is really, really nice. So let's take a look. So this is an online tool, so you have to go to petski.skrz.hu and um, you are greeted with this screen and as you can see it has quite some tools here. You can edit the character sets, we have the standard C64 character sets and the pet character sets. You can also create PRG files for the pet here. Um, you have a sprite editor and a screen editor and I will take you through all the different uh, variations of that. So maybe the main thing to note is that in most games the background is actually made up of characters. So you can redefine these character sets and um, just like in the Mario games where you have little blocks of graphics which make up the whole level, it's pretty much the same in uh, on the C64 and you can have either single color or multicolor characters and I will get into this in a moment and what you do as a game programmer is you redefine the character set for the background and then you move some sprites over the background and you can have eight sprites at a time but you can do something that is called sprite multiplexing in which you can have more than eight sprites by waiting for the vertical blank of the CRT to draw the sprite and then reuse the sprite in a later location and then it, the sprite gets drawn again. So that's called sprite multiplexing, so you can have more than eight sprites. In case you wondered why many games on the C64 have more than eight sprites or very large sprites, that is because you have this multiplexing. But we won't go into, this, uh, into detail of that today. So let's take a look at this and maybe let's start with the sprites. On the C64, the sprites have a size. If we go into the editor, this is the sprite editor. You may uh, recognize this balloon, which is from the original C64 manual. And that was maybe the first program most of the kids back in the days, and maybe you too, typed in from the manual, which lets a balloon fly across the screen. And that is exactly that balloon. So, what you can do is you can move this sprite around, you can uh, erase stuff and uh, flip horizontal and vertically and do all that. Um, that wasn't that, it's just uh, removing a line. What you can see here is you have um, these squares which are made of 8x8 eight eight pixels. So this gives you 24 um, horizontally and it gives you 21 in height. And that is for single color sprites. So you can see you can just select the color and the color changes because it's a single color sprite and that is that. So in single color mode you have 24 by um, 21 pixels. If you change this to multicolor you can see that this looks a little bit broken off and you have actually three colors plus a background. The background is not drawn and um, the important thing to note is you still have only one color which is specific to that sprite and you have two multicolors which you can use on other multicolor sprites but if you change the color here the color changes on all the other sprites too so let me give you an example so let's first use this multicolor sprite and let's say we draw this balloon as good as we can for now so that is our balloon for now. And we can also use, let's go here and use black as a background color so we can actually see our second color. Yeah, so that is our very rudimentary balloon and we draw a fat green dot in the middle. And now we do a second sprite and we also use multicolor. And we use this background and we, as you can see, you have different colors here 
but that doesn't get you too far because as soon as you try to draw here, so I will just draw one blob and then one blob in white around that and then one blob in blue around that and now it seems that you have multicolored sprites here and all the colors are independent but as soon as you go to the screen and let's say we edit a new screen so you get a c64 screen and you can pretty much use any character which is here let's just go here and you can just type hello hello world and let's say we add a sprite here and let's add our balloon and let's move that balloon here and let's also add another sprite and as you can see it shows the fixed colors up here so if I switch this to white the white goes for all the sprites and that is the catch here so if you use multicolor sprite instead of single color sprites make sure that you choose the right colors from the beginning because you can't change them except for the original sprite color which you can or which is actually specific to the sprite as you can see if you use multicolor sprites um, we need one bit more for the color information and um, for that the horizontal pixels are just doubled so if you switch between single color you can see it's 8 um, or uh, it's uh, 24 by 21 and if you switch to multicolor you just got 12 by 21 because the pixels are doubled um, there's something else you can do with sprites and that is you can actually expand you can see in the x and y uh, direction so you can make the sprite bigger with, uh, which is nice if you for example have some uh, end bosses which have to be big on the screen like an r-type yeah so that is the sprite editor you can actually um, animate sprites and uh, stuff like that but we are not going into this today you can copy and paste stuff um, let's just do this here quickly so you can see if I just enter a sprite range this gets animated and I can use it I can change the speed or I can ping pong which is uh, it goes to the end and then goes back and stuff like that so that is the sprite editor which is quite nice and you can really do the sprites for C64 game right in here next we have the character sets and you can export import stuff here and the good thing is that you can do all this also from the um, from the screen so if you want to do some petsky art or stuff like that you just go to edit you can go here let's say the a is not the a you want you just go on bitmap editor and you go and draw your character and again you have the option of single color um, extended background which then reduces the number of characters actually and the multicolor and again these multicolors um, are the same like in the sprites you can see that here you have a character color which is um, specific to here this one character and you have these multicolors which are then again for all the other characters too so let's go and draw something here are we on the character down here so let's just go and draw something and the final character being like this <coughs> and then we can go and just draw that on the screen and that is pretty much like all the games do it in on the C64. Yeah, so that is how you do Petsky art. You can redefine every character here and you can see that you're pretty much um, limited by the number of characters right here. You can define palettes 
and this has predefined palettes, which is pretty much, uh, which are pretty much the the original palette, um, plus a few very bright palettes. And I'm using Colador because this is closest. You can uh, set scan lines and stuff like that to get the effect of a real C64. You have different options which you can how you can name that and keyboard layouts and stuff like that. Now you can animate screens, by the way. So if you have more than one screen, you can uh, do some uh, character animation. Um, for example, like the one of the intro from the 8-bit guy. You can do this completely inside here and then export that as a PRG file. And let me show you how that works. So you go to, to export and then you get this menu and you can export a runnable PRG file. You can export raw byte streams, a PNG image of the screen. If you just want to show off the screen, you can export a, a project for um, CBM Studio, which is a development environment for C64 games. Uh, screen code sequence, I don't know what that is, and you can export assembly source code. And if you click here, you can see this gives you the raw assembly source code, which you can then copy into any kind of assembler, um, assemble and go away. Or you can just export the runnable PRG file, which I'm doing now. So I have this PRG file now. And if I open Vice, I can just go and say Smart Attach. And you see here's my new screen PRG. And if this gets loaded, and if I type run, that's my screen in a real or well, emulated now. C64. You can copy this to a disk and have your own screen or game or stuff like that. So no basic programming or anything like this. It's just there. And because I redefined the character set, you can see now, well, that is not good because it's redefined. Yeah, so I just want to quickly show you that, which is a Petsky Editor. It's called Petsky Editor, and I will post the link in the description below. It's quite a nice tool, and I think you can at least go and be artistic if you don't want to program and uh, create some nice Petsky graphics on the screen or some sprites, export it as a PRG file, and uh, yeah, I think that is quite an achievement. So, um, as always, thanks for watching and until next time. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.